Okay, guys, I've got a riddle for you. What's the difference between a React custom hook and React context, or even just a regular React component for that matter? React context serves a very specific purpose, and this purpose is very different from just a regular React component. The whole entire point of React context is to share state to downstream components so that each time this component renders, it's going to pass down all of that state, all of that data that's contained into the context throughout your app. And the key point is that the context is global. The context is shareable. Everything that is connected to the context can reach inside of it. And that's the difference between React context and just regular components. It's shareable. It's global. Every single time you create a custom hook or just a regular React component, it's its own little self-contained object and it's not really meant to be shared. React context is created with, you guessed it, a context and a provider. Context is just pretty much the component. It's a React component that can be shared, that is global, and has no JSX in it. And context isn't going to have JSX because you're not rendering HTML and you're sharing data. Also, it has a provider. Provider is there just to provide the data, but truthfully, you use the provider once and that's pretty much it. So you just set it up and it's good to go. And you don't really have to worry that much about what a provider is. And this is what our code is going to look like. We're going to have just regular old set state. We're going to have a user. We're going to have a token. We're going to have methods that are going to act on the state and set the state. And we'll be able to use our token and our user throughout the whole entire app after we get done. So let's go ahead, let's hop inside VS Code and let's code it up. Okay, so we are inside of Visual Studio Code. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is go into my front end and we don't actually have a folder for the context. So I'm gonna go into here and create a new folder for to put all our context stuff in. And what we're gonna do is we're going to make a custom hook wrap it within the context two totally se separate things but if you don't know what i'm talking about let's just go ahead and code it here so i'm going to go into here i'm going to say use auth.tsx and the first thing that we have to do is you have to type the context a lot of this is going to be conf confusing at first but just kind of hold on here and it'll it'll make sense here in a second so i'm going to go into here i'm going to type the the context we're going to have a user and we're going to have to make a profile. So we have a user profile just by itself and we also have a user profile with token. And I'm going to make a user profile within the user models folder and I'm just going to leave out the token. So I'm gonna say export type, user profile. And you could just call this user, but I called it user profile because I think with time, this is that's probably what it will become. It'll start off as just a user first, but when you wanna add pictures and you wanna add all this other stuff, it's probably gonna become a profile. So prepared accordingly. And we're going to, this user profile is going to have a username and it's also going to have a string. And we're gonna go ahead and bring it in. Looking good. So we've got the very first type. Now what we need to do is we need to make a token and the token is going to be a type of string and it can also be null because people when people aren't logged in, they are going to have a null uh, token. So I'm gonna go into here, go ahead, go down. And this is where we're going to make the method. So we're typing the state and the method. I'm gonna call this register user. It's going to take in an email, be string, be username. So we're also going to pass in a username and this is going to be a string. And also we're going to pass in a password. That's also going to be a string. I'm gonna to have to get rid of that L. Sorry, I got a new computer, so I'm kind of getting used to the arrangement of the keys. And register users always going to be void. And most functions in React are going to be void. Very rarely will you return anything from a function in React. Sometimes you will. So we'll also we're gonna lock in our user. It's going to be a string, password, and it's also going to be a string. And you guessed it, we're going to return a void. We're going to have a logout. And this is also going to be a function that's going to return void. And then here we're going to say is logged in and this is actually going to return a boolean 
So some, not all the time, but most of the time you're going to return void. So here's where we're going to type it. And React Context utilizes props depending on how you use it. But the type of context that we're going to build is going to use props because it's a lot easier. And whenever you pass children into a React component, you have to type it. Uh, you have to type the children with, uh, as you see here, with the React node. Okay, and here is where we're going to actually create the user context, and we've already got our type. And when you create a context, you just use this hook called create context. It's pretty simple. And we're going to pass in our user context type because we just got done typing it. And here is very, this is kind of strange. So the reason that I'm doing this is because when you type this or whenever you pass something into the create context, if you are in regular React, you could just put nothing in there, but because we're in TypeScript, we have to add an object, and the object has to be a type of user context, or it won't work. And it is kind of strange that they do that in TypeScript, but it just kind of is what it is. And we're going to, this is where we're going to create the provider. And after you use the provider, you won't have to ever uh, worry about it again. So we'll just go ahead into here. We're going to uh, create it. Okay, and it looks good. Our linter is making sure everything looks good. So we're going to go down here. We're going to bring in use navigate and use navigate is a part of React Writer DOM. And this is how we are going to navigate to the uh, other pages of the app after we log in. And then I'm going to new up some state gonna go ahead and set this token so set token and we're going to use state and this can be of type string but it could also be of type null because nothing could be in it and because we're in react uh, and because we're in react TypeScript we're going to have to go ahead to here and we're going to have to pass in a null and also I need to bring in the state so go ahead bring that in Next thing that I'm going to do is create the uh, user state. So we're going to go into here and I'm going to say set user. We're going to, of course, have use state and this can be of type user profile and it, but it could also be null as well too because they might not be logged in. And we're going to go ahead and pass in null. So next we're going to have uh, an asynchronous um, state value and this is to create an asynchronous code pattern because we're going to have to use protected routes here in a second and in order to utilize the protected routes we're going to have to use an asynchronous pattern and we'll worry about that later um, it's kind of confusing but I'll explain it when we actually get to it explaining it right now just probably confuse people more so we're gonna create a use effect and we need to get the token every single time that they log in and we need to check to see if the token actually exists. We're gonna go into here and we're going to store the token uh, under, or we're going to get the token and we're, the way that we're going to actually store our token is within local storage. We could make a more secure form of storage but there's no real sensitive data within our app. So I think really going all out and providing very secure JWT storage is kind of overkill in this case. So I'm just going to go into here and we're going to get the item and it's going to be a token. Okay, so that looks good. And we also need to check if they're there. So if the values are actually in the local storage, what we're going to do is we're going to set them within our state. We're going to say set user and this is JSON so we need to parse. And we're going to go ahead, pass in our user. That looks good. Next thing, we're going to set our token. So we're gonna go here, set token, and we just pass in our token right here. And of course, to prevent it from re-rendering a thousand times, make sure you go ahead, toss your uh, array in there. And then we're gonna go down here. And after all this is done, this is when we're going to set ready, set is ready, and we're going to set it to true. And if you don't know what set is ready, it is, like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll explain it here in a second. So here's where we're going to actually begin creating our functions. So I'm going to go into here. This is going to be async. And we're going to pass in our email. We got to type this. So we're going to say string. 
we're also going to pass in our username and it's going to be of type string. Then we're also going to pass in our password, which is going to be of type string. Okay, then we're gonna go down here and here's where we're going to just go ahead, reach into the API endpoints that we just made and we're going to use those. So I'm gonna go register API. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down. And we're going to say email, username, password. Then we're going to go ahead, we're going to do a then on this promise. And within the then, we're going to get back a response object. So when we get back this response object, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to, of course, we're going to set our token. So I'm going to go into here, we'll say local storage, then we'll just toss our token into uh, the local storage. I'm going to call this token and the data that we're going to pass in is going to be res.data is equal to token. Then we're going to create a user object and within this user object, we're going to store our username. And of course it's going to be res.data.username. Then go down here. And this is where we're going to also set our email. And you guessed it, res.data.email. Pass in this object to our local storage because we're going to probably need this later. And we're going to set the item and we're going to pass in the user and we're going to turn our JSON into a string with JSON stringify. Then we're gonna go ahead and toss in that user object that we just made, looking good. So now we got our user, let's go ahead, let's also set our token. So I'm going to say res.data.token and this can be null, this can be null. So we're gonna go ahead, just tell the computer that it can be null if we, if we want it to be. And then we're gonna go into here and we're going to set our user. And of course our user object can also be nullable so we're going to go ahead add a bang there and here's where we're going to add our toast so if all of this goes through and i need to also bring this in so i'm going to go ahead command or control whichever if you're on a pc i'm on a mac right now and i'm going to go toast success and i'm going to say login success i think that, that's how you spell success looking good okay so now we're going to go navigate and after we get done doing that we're going to navigate to our search page so the user can start using our app as they please. And lastly, we could go ahead and add a catch. This is another Hail Mary. So if you get an E here, we'll just say E, then we'll pass in our toast.warning and we'll say, this will be server error occurred. And if, so if this happens, something definitely bad just happened. I need to go into here and I'm going to put parentheses around this and that looks good. Okay, so now we're gonna have our login user which is not really going to be that much different. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead here, going to just grab this whole entire thing. Let me see here. Let me make sure I'm grabbing the right thing. So this is the one that we want. So I'm gonna go up to here, go ahead, grab this. You're not going to go ahead, copy it down. So go down here and we'll call this login. And we'll call this user. We're ha we have a lot of logins, so you need to be careful just using just a plain old login like that. And the login's going to be different because we don't need the email. You could make it so that it could sign in through the email if you wanted to, but we didn't do that on our API, so we're just going to use it the way that we intended it. And I'm going to say, because we have two logins in here, I'm going to say login API, go ahead, get rid of that. And I'm going to go ahead, check to make sure. So we're going to go check if res, we're going to say user object, local storage. Okay, looking good. And that's pretty much going to be it for our user or our login. Then we're going to check if it is logged in. So I'm going to say is logged in. And we're going to do a little magic down here. We're going to say return user or uh, double bang. 
and we're going to say user. So if the user is there, it's going to return true. Then we're going to make our logout. So of course we got to have a logout. Then we're going to go down here, local storage. And this is where we're just going to go ahead, blow away everything. So I'm going to say, get, uh, remove item. Going to remove the token, local stores dot remove item. And we're also going to remove the user. And then after this, we're going to set all our state to null. So we're going to set user to null. We're going to set token to just an empty string. And then we're going to navigate back to the home page. So we're going to go into here and we're just going to put a slash. And then finally, this is where we're going to return all this wonderful data. So we're going to say user context. This is where we're going to go ahead bring in our provider. We're also going to have to add the values explicitly. You could just add all, you could add everything in here, but here's the thing, React Context, React Context renders a lot. So anything that you do not want or could prevent further rendering or cause, basically the whole entire point is you want it to render as least as possible. So if you have anything in here you're not using, just go ahead and leave it out. That was a lot simpler way of putting that. Okay, so I'm going to go register user. And I spelled logged in wrong. So go ahead here. We're gonna say logged in, register user. And I'm gonna call this register user. I accidentally, I just called it register. I want to call it register user. So we have all of our values. What do we do now? Well, first things we're gonna close all this out. And this is where we're going to add our async pattern. So is ready is equal to children is equal to null. And this is the asynchronous pattern. And the reason we need to do is ready is because we have a lot of asynchronous code. And this asynchronous code pattern is going to make sure that our component renders correctly with async and await. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of uh, asynchronous issues. Okay, so we could use this context the way that we have it right now, but we're super cool React people, so we're gonna wrap this little sucker in a, a, a custom hook, and it's gonna look, I'm telling you, this actually looks really awesome. These React people, they do, I'll tell you what, they do know how to make some cool looking code. So we're gonna go into here, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this in a uh, custom hook. We're gonna go ahead and export it. Oh, and I almost forgot, we're going to have to wrap our app TSX in the actual provider. So if you don't wrap this in a provider, React's not going to know and React's not going to be able to push down the data for you. So we're going to have to wrap the whole entire thing in our provider. Also, one other thing is that we did wrap it at the very top of the actual React tree, but that's okay because the user provider is going to be important and our whole entire app is going to have to be functioning off of our authentication. So it's not optimal. You don't want to do this, but I think in our case, we don't really have any other choice. So we're going to wrap that in the user provider and also Almost forgot another thing too, this is crazy. We need to add our beer token to the headers and there's a little trick that you can do. There's different, there's many ways that you could go about this, but I found a way that you can quickly just add your token to Axios and we're going to go reach into here. We're going to go Axios default, defaults. So Axios.defaults. So we're gonna go defaults and then we're going to reach into our headers common we're going to add authorization and no spaces and we're going to add our beer so our beer token we're going to add a space because we need a space and then after that we're just going to go ahead and toss our token in here and axios this is pretty sweet axios is just going to add this to every single axios request so we don't have to do any type of crazy code patterns Anyways, that's pretty much it. We can finally move on to our UI and we can start adding all of this to our login pages and throughout our app. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.